Welcome back to Proxam, everybody. And today we're going to be talking about the infamous Corsair Void Reavers and Void Scarred, a unit, well, two units really, that people typically don't take in competitive play because of their several downsides. But today we're going to be doing a comprehensive guide on the Corsairs and basically in an effort to understand how they're effective and how they can be used in games to turn the tide of the battle. So Corsairs, I believe, are one of those units that, while not competitive, can certainly be made to be very good and effective. So they may not be as good as other units in our codex, but they can certainly punch their own weight, and they're very self-sufficient. So let's get right into it. So in this video, we're going to be looking at the stats, weapons, and special rules for Corsair units. We're going to be looking at their strengths and weaknesses. And we're going to be looking at where Corsairs fit into regular lists, if at all. And we're also going to be looking at the best ways to use the Corsair Void Scarred and Void Reavers, which I have to say are really cool models and a really cool idea and theme. So it's kind of a shame that they're not as good as they should be. So looking at the stats of the Void Reaver, we have average Craftworld Elder stats. They have two attacks, which is one more attack than a Guardian, and they're 10 points per model. Otherwise, they're exactly the same as a Guardian, and they can be taken in units of 5 to 10 models, which means that they can be taken in less numbers than Guardians have to be taken in. They are armed with a power sword. So this is actually a really good weapon for the cost that you pay for these guys. You only pay 10 points, which is two more points than a Storm Guardian, and you're getting a power weapon that has plus one strength and minus three AP, which is much better than the Storm Guardian close combat weapon. And this is especially powerful with Corsairs because they have the Reavers of the Void ability, which means that six is the hit, cause auto wounds. So while the Power Sword may not look like the best option, it actually hits very hard and it hits far above the weight class of the model. And remember, you're only paying 10 points for these guys. You're not paying more than that. So, you know, is the Power Sword a Banshee Blade? Absolutely not. But it does have a good amount of AP and a decent strength for the cost you're paying for the model. They're also armed with Shuriken Pistols. This is the basic pistol, but again, due to the Reavers of Void ability, which is essentially Hail of Doom, but for everything, the basic pistol is pretty good. Let's just put it that way. 10 shots from these guys on average will cause one auto wound to hit, which may not seem like much, but when you're trying to get the most out of the unit, one more wound is pretty good it's nothing to sneeze at so yeah shuriken pistols may be the basic pistol but they're even better on void reavers and void reavers do get special weapon options so they can take a blaster which is good at damaging light tanks or monsters they have the shredder which is basically a death spinner with more range but less ap ap minus one instead of ap minus two and range 18 instead of range 12 and the Neuro Disruptor is an interesting upgrade. It's five points, but it's basically a ranged dire sword with pistol. I find that this weapon is decent, but not necessary. It does cost five points, which is half the cost of a, another Void Reaver. So you have to take that into account. However, it's not terrible. I've taken one of these before, and it's gotten me a few kills, I have to say. So it's not the best weapon out there, but it's certainly not the worst. However, in most cases, you're just going to want to take the regular Shuriken Pistol and save the points and put those points elsewhere. Then we have a couple heavy weapon options. We have the Shuriken Cannon, which is only 10 points. It's a pretty balanced weapon for anti-infantry that really benefits, again, greatly from the Reavers of the Void ability, especially with the Shuriken Special Roll. That means a roll of a 6 to hit auto wounds, and remember, auto wounds of 6 count as, for shuriken weapons, an additional minus 2 AP. So this is very effective with the shuriken cannon because it has more shots and can 
definitely rack up some good damage for the cost. And again, basically, Reavers of the Void is Hail of Doom, but on steroids. So Hail of Doom only works with shirking weapons, whereas Reavers of the Void works for any attack. So you're really getting a lot of bang for your buck with this shirking cannon. They also have access to the Shuriken Rifle, which is essentially a Shuriken Catapult, but instead of range 18, it has range 24 and is Rapid Fire 1. So essentially kind of like a mix between a Shuriken Catapult and a Splinter Rifle of the Dark Eldar. So perfect for keeping distance while maintaining the Shuriken Special Rule, which is extra effective with their Reavers of the Void ability. And they have the Wraith Cannon, which is also really good and potentially... Pretty insane if they can actually roll a 6 to hit, which, again, would make it pretty effective at dealing with tanks and would inflict mortal wounds. I think the Wraith Cannon actually is a slightly underrated choice for this unit because it does have the Assault keyword, which means that it can move and fire without penalty. So that's very, well, it's a very good thing to keep in mind because the Shuriken Cannon is a heavy weapon, which means that... If you want to move and fire with it, you're going to be at minus one ballistic skill. Now, this doesn't matter too much. Again, if you are facing down infantry and you want the Corsairs to deal with infantry or sit back on an objective, that extra range is going to be much more useful than the Wraith Cannon. However, the Wraith Cannon is still an option, and I think it is a very powerful weapon for this unit. And then we have the upgrade, the Mist Shield, which gives a four plus invul save to the Felark, which is a squad leader. I truly, truly don't think this upgrade ever has any real value, I have to say. And it seems like more of a kill team inclusion, to be honest, something that'd be useful in kill teams, but something that's not really useful in regular games. So I don't think it's worth it, but it does give the Felark added durability if you need it. However, Trust me, guys, you're never going to need it. It's, there's never going to be an instance where you actually use this and the squad is still worth keeping alive. There's just no point. I mean, I, I suppose in odd scenarios this could be useful, but it's one of those things that you really don't want in your list because it's not going to give you much value for its cost. And here's the reason why people don't take them. Because of their outcast and pirate's ability, the unit can never be taken as a compulsory choice unless the detachment has only and Wrathy units. So that means other Corsairs or Prince Riel, which by the way, Prince Riel is an Enrathe unit, which means that you can have a detachment entirely made up of Corsairs if you include Prince Riel in that detachment. And at that point, they will count as compulsory because every other unit is also in Rathay. But again, this basically means that it opens up the possibility of taking a patrol detachment of Corsairs and having them count as compulsory choices, which can be very useful. However, I have to say, is it worth the command extra command points? Probably not. And I really don't see much of a reason for doing that, but it is an option. And just a quick shout out to Prince Riel. He is very good with Corsairs because he allows them to actually benefit from his Path of Command ability to reroll ones to hit. This is extremely effective because not only does this boost their Reavers of the Void ability by giving them an extra chance to roll a six to hit, but it's the only buff really that these guys can directly benefit from. So Prince Riel is really good with Corsairs. And of course... Here's what I've been talking about for the last couple minutes is the Reavers of the Void. So each time a model in the unit makes an attack, any attack, an unmodified hit roll of six automatically wounds a target and is treated as an unmodified wound roll of six. So this is basically Hail of Doom, but for every single attack, ranged and close combat, and it's extremely powerful. And even though they don't benefit from craft roll traits or most psychic powers, they are cheap enough that you can always just take more of them which means that you're getting more Reavers of the Void procs and stuff like that. This unit can actually be extremely powerful if it can be allowed to perform the function that it's good at, which is killing infantry. But also think about this. A unit of these guys charging into a tank with power swords might not be a bad idea because guess what? 
a lot of those attacks are going to score auto wounds. So it might not actually be a bad thing to use these guys as finishers or, you know, a unit that can hit far above its weight class. And again, just like Hail of Doom units, right? Dire Avengers are really good at killing basically everything with Hail of Doom. These guys can essentially be a lesser version of that for a cheaper price point. Even though they can't be buffed, they are cheaper, which means that you can take more of them, which is essentially kind of like a buff in and of itself. And lastly, we have their keyword. So the key here is they have the Enrathe and the Azurani keyword. And the Azurani keyword allows them to benefit from certain Crawford stratagems, which is very important. This means they can benefit from things like Bladestorm and Fire and Fade and different stratagems like that. And then we have the Void Scarred, the Corsair Void Scarred. So basically, they have the exact same stat line as the Void Reavers, but they have one more attack, making them a little bit more adept at close combat, and they cost two more points a model at 12 points. And they're an elite slot. Now, the cool thing about this unit is that you can actually take multiple special models, which buff the squad in different ways. The Shade Runner is a melee specialist with one more attack and weapon skill. However, I do not recommend taking him in most cases because he does not make up his points worth of damage in most cases. In most cases, it's just better to go with another Corsair Void Scarred. The Soul Weaver is a defensive specialist that protects the unit from one attack each turn. And the thing about this is I think if this unit was a more elite smaller unit this could be very effective but they're single wound models and they're not very tough so i don't think this is that great to be honest and you're paying a lot of points for the soul weaver so typically i don't think it's the best idea to have one however you know if you like the soul weaver you can add one into the unit it doesn't hurt it that much it's just about eight more points well eight points more expensive and then the Wayseeker is basically a Psyker with access to Runes of Fate and Fortune. I didn't put Fortune here, but it also does have Runes of Fortune. And this is probably one of the best and biggest reasons to take this unit is because of the Wayseeker. Having access to Runes of Fate and Fortune is very useful, especially when you're using offensive Psychic Powers. And lastly, you have the Felark, which is the unit leader. The Felark benefits from one extra attack and one extra leadership over the regular Void's Guard. They are all armed just like the Void Reavers with power swords. They're effective close combat weapons with high AP, and again, they're especially powerful with the Corsairs, Reavers of the Void ability. And these guys actually use these power swords a little bit better because they have more attacks than the regular Void Reavers. So they're more deadly with these Power Swords. Just like the Void Reavers, they can take a Shuriken Cannon, which is basically a balanced weapon for anti-infantry and also benefits from Reavers of, the, Reavers of the Void. And we have the Shuriken Pistol, which is the basic pistol, and again, slightly better due to the aforementioned rule, Reavers of the Void. We have, again, the special weapon options, Corsair Blaster and Shredder. The Blaster is pretty effective at doing light damage to tanks and monsters, and the Shredder is basically a death spinner with more range and less AP. And lastly, we have the Wayseeker weapon, the Witch Staff. This is basically the same thing as a Spirit Seer. It always wounds on 2+, plus and does D3 damage. Not a bad weapon, but not super fantastic the cool thing about the Wayseeker, though is that the Wayseeker has more attacks than a normal spirit seer or farseer so that's a positive thing about the Wayseeker. the Wayseeker is actually decent in combat especially with the witch strike power which is a runes of fortune ability that basically makes it so that every wound you deal deals a mortal wound so it's pretty nice to have that in your back pocket if you do have a Wayseeker. And lastly, of course, we have the Wraith Cannon, which again can be very good with the Reavers of the Void. Well, potentially good, that is, if you roll a six. And it's just a pretty good weapon overall. 
And then we have an interesting inclusion that the Void Reavers didn't have, which is the Ranger Long Rifle. And this is a little interesting because of its synergy with Reavers of the Void. Again, a 6 to hit will cause an auto wound of a 6, which also procs the Ranger Long Rifle's ability. So you're basically going to be doing 2 damage with this thing if it does happen to roll a 6 to hit. However... This weapon is a heavy weapon, and it's not very good on the move. So in most cases, it's just not going to be that much more effective than a regular shuriken rifle. And it's definitely not going to be as effective as a shuriken cannon at doing damage. So even though it's a little less points, it still costs 5 points, which is, again, another interesting thing. And to be honest, it makes them more expensive, point for point, than a ranger, and a ranger does this much better. So even though this is cool from a kill team kind of perspective, having the ability to take a sniper rifle, from the perspective of an actual bigger game of 40k, it's just not going to be that useful, and often it's just going to be, in most cases, a waste of 5 points. Then we have the paired Hecatari Blades, which are the Shade Runner weapons. They're slightly worse than the Power Swords, but the stats of the Shade Runner make up for this slightly. Again, I don't think the Shade Runner is that cost effective, to be honest, even with the Shade Runner Assault ability, which I'll go over in a second. I just don't think they're that cost effective, but they are cool looking models and it does increase the power of the unit in combat slightly. For pistols, we have the Fusion Pistol and Neuro Disruptor. The Fusion Pistol is pretty expensive at 10 points and in my opinion, doesn't really have the range to be effective but it can pack a punch in close combat if you are allowed to shoot, which basically means if you didn't kill the unit you charged into, the fusion pistol can be useful for killing another model. And again, the newer disruptor is another interesting upgrade for five points, basically a ranged dire sword. And statistically speaking, if this weapon is allowed to shoot a few times, it will make up its points fairly quickly. And the kind of cool thing about these two pistol inclusions is that one model in the unit can actually be armed with two pistols as the fusion pistol replaces the power sword. So you could actually be running around with a shuriken pistol and a fusion pistol. So that's kind of cool, but not really that effective. Uh, just mostly for cool factor, to be honest. And we have some of the unit special rules here. We have the channeler stones, which is the soul weaver's ability to negate the first failed saving throw now here's the thing about this this ability isn't actually as good as it sounds because it designates that it's the first time a saving throw has failed for the bearer's unit it's not when you choose if it was when you choose i think it would be much better and possibly good to include a shadow weaver but because it's the first time a clever player is going to get around this by just shooting anti-infantry firepower at him, and it's just not going to really do a whole lot. The Falcho is an interesting choice for 10 points. It basically allows the unit's range attacks to ignore light cover, so that's pretty decent. And, of course, we have the Mishidal. Again, it gives the Felark an invulnerable save. Again, probably not worth the points. The Shade Runner has its own ability, the Shade Runner Assault. Whenever you charge a unit... On the roll of a 2 to 5, that unit suffers one mortal wound. On a 6, it suffers two mortal wounds. So, honestly, it's one mortal wound. It's it's okay. It's just not the best ability. And again, I do think the Shade Runner is less cost-effective than just a regular Void Reaver in most cases. But if you are just running one unit and you want it to be as hard hitting as possible the shade runner is a decent option for that if you're running a melee oriented unit the way seeker never suffers perils of the warp so in a lot of ways he's like a farcer with the ghost helm so this is basically a guarantee that you won't die from a perils of the warp attack by rolling a double one or double six and of course, we have the Outcast and Pirates ability, which basically means that they cannot be used as a compulsory choice unless that detachment only includes in Wrath of units. And this isn't that big of a deal because they are elites. And then Reavers of the Void basically, right, Hail of Doom for all of their attacks. Six is the hit, auto wound, and it counts as an unmodified wound roll of a six. So it procs different abilities that wound on sixes, like Shuriken weapons. 
And lastly, the Psyker ability for the Wayseeker. Basically, the Wayseeker can cast and deny one Psyche Power turn and knows one power from the Runes of Fate or Fortune Disciplines. I forgot to mention that here, but it can also learn from the Runes of Fortune. It can't use powers, though, to target its own Corsairs, which is the problem, right? Because most of the Runes of Fate powers only target core units, and these guys are not core, but... They make excellent use of offensive spells like Executioner and Mind War and Crushing Orb and things like that. Maybe not so much Mind War because they have a lower leadership value than a Farseer, but they can definitely use powers like Executioner and Crushing Orb and Witch Strike to pretty good effect for their cost. So when we start to talk about their strengths and weaknesses... They do have a lot of considerable weaknesses, but they also have some good strengths. They have a reasonable base cost with solid stats. They auto wound on six to the hit with everything. It doesn't matter what weapon they have. They have versatile weapon options, which include anti-tank and anti-infantry weapons. The Void Reavers themselves are objective secured, so they can do a good job capturing objectives and taking objectives away from enemy units. The Corsair Void Scarred have the cheapest Runes of Fate Psyker, which also can cast Runes of Fortune for a low cost, and they can still benefit from stratagems. So even though there's only a few stratagems that they can actually benefit from, those stratagems happen to be pretty good. Now they do have some considerable weaknesses though, and this is one of the main reasons why no one takes them. They can't be affected by any direct buffs other than Prince Riel's Path of Command Aura. Other than that, they are not considered Crawford units. They are not considered core units. So therefore, they cannot benefit from any of these buffs. The other thing is, is that they are not compulsory, which means you cannot take Void Reavers or Void Scarred as compulsory choices in a detachment. So if you want these guys, you're still going to have to fill out the minimum troop or elite slots with other Crawford Eldar units. So they can't be taken as a force of their own typically unless you use Prince Riel in certain circumstances in smaller point games. You just can't do it. It's, it's almost impossible. But you can have a significant number of Corsairs. You just need to meet those minimum requirements for the Crawford, which is typically in a battalion, three troops and two HQs. So having said that, where do Corsairs really fit in and is there room to fit them in in regular lists? And I think there's a couple of ways in which they can fit into regular lists to be effective. One of which is close combat oriented lists who can't really spare psychic powers on buffing shooting units. So the reason why this is good is because if you're using guide and doom on your close combat units then your shooting units are basically going in unbuffed. Now, the cool thing about Corsairs is they come with a self-buff, which is the Reavers of the Void. They basically have Hail of Doom, right? So these guys can be used to pick off enemy units at range and whittle units down to make them easier to deal with for your combat units. So they do fit in nicely with close combat-oriented lists. And the Void Reavers are also the cheapest objective secured unit in the Codex at 50 points base. Even Rangers are more expensive, 15 points more expensive. So if you're looking for a little bit of extra objective secured coverage and you already have your Rangers and maybe you're thinking, hmm, I don't quite have the points for a Ranger unit. Instead of cutting some stuff out in the list, some upgrades that you may need, you can put in a unit of Corsairs for 50 points with Shuriken Rifles and that can give you some extra objective coverage. They also offer cheap psychic support in the form of the Wayseeker for Corsair Void Scarred. And again, they can have pretty good offensive psychic powers, and those offensive psychic powers are a little bit better in most cases with the Wayseeker than they are with the Farseer. Remember, a Wayseeker is kind of expendable. It's okay if you put the Wayseeker in harm's way because the unit isn't that expensive. It's not that, well needed for victory right so having that unit have an offensive psychic power is very useful and they can also be used to score on psychic secondaries without having to sacrifice your farseer or warlock who may have a better 
more important psychic power to cast that turn. And lastly, they can still benefit from the runes of battle debuffs. So yeah, that's right. Things like Reveal, things like Jinx. Corsairs can still benefit from these debuffs because they do not specifically say that only Craft World Core units benefit from them. So you can Jinx an enemy unit and the Corsairs will get the benefit of that debuff. You can use Reveal on a unit and again, the Corsairs will get the benefit of that debuff. So they can also benefit greatly from the Runes of Battle debuffs. So basically, I've playtested these guys a little bit over the past couple weeks here and there, mostly in fun games. But what I can say is the best ways to run the Corsair Voids card and Void Reavers that I found are as follows. And with the Void Reavers, I have two builds. One is the Crafty Swashbucklers and the other is the Shifty Buccaneers. And for the Voids card, I have the Psychic Privateers and, of course, the Space Pirates crew. So the first build that I've actually found to be a little effective is the Crafty Swashbuckler. So basically, this is a minimum unit of five armed with power swords and tricking pistols. So this unit is basically just going to be used in conjunction with other combat units to provide support or be held in reserve as a counter assault unit to protect your backline elements. Typically, if you have a webway portal or something like this, a unit like this can be decent as a cheap way to sweep off enemy units that are trying to control that objective. And because they have the objective secured ability, you will still be able to score points on secondaries like the hidden path, which is pretty much a requirement if you do have a webway gate in your army. And for 50 points, they actually do decent damage. They're not actually that bad. And they're basically half the cost of a Howling Banshee Squad. So you could have two units of these of five for the same cost as a Howling Banshee Squad. And they can do pretty comparable damage against most enemy types. Now, against really tough targets, they will have a little bit of a harder time because they can't be buffed or anything like that, like Howling Banshees can. And they don't have that cool Banshee Mask, which forces enemies to strike last, but they can be effective against certain opponents. And they also work quite well with Howling Banshees too, because they benefit from the Howling Banshees Banshee Mask, which forces the enemy unit to strike last, and they can add a little bit of extra punch to any assault that they're a part of. Because of their Reavers of Avoid ability, again, six is the hit, auto wound. And their power swords are not terrible weapons. They have a good amount of AP behind them. AP minus three. So a lot of opponents will not get much of an armor save. The next build I like to call the Shifty Buccaneers. And this is basically just a unit of five or 10 with Shuriken Rifles. This will cost you anywhere from 50 points to 100 points. And this unit provides shooting support and objective secured in the midfield without having to be buffed and can add a significant number of damage at long range to any types of targets that you need them to hit, including vehicles. These guys, because of their Reavers of the Void ability, can also do decent ping damage against vehicles as well. Because of their ability to negate a lot of armor because of the Shuriken weapon and the Shuriken special rule, even enemy tanks aren't safe from taking a few wounds to these guys per turn. And they can also take special weapons Although they are optional, they can be pretty effective. They do increase the price of the units considerably, the blaster and the wraith cannon being more of the expensive anti-tank options, and the shuriken cannon being priced reasonably well at 10 points. It will increase the cost of the unit, but can add a lot of decent firepower to your mid-game shooting. And personally, I'm a big fan of the shuriken cannon because it basically has the same range as the shuriken rifles and it adds a lot of extra firepower to the unit at mid-range so pretty good weapon again it also benefits from the reavers of the void ability so essentially this unit is going to be hitting pretty hard for its cost then we have the corsair voids guard and we have the psychic privateers so this is a minimum unit of five armed with shuriken rifles with the Wayseeker model so essentially, this unit is just meant to provide a good way 
to get cheap psychic support to craft world elder units, so either fortune, will of Azurin, or doom, etc., but can also be used as an offensive psyker with executioner, mind war, crushing orb, or witch strike. Although, if you are going to put witch strike on the wayseeker, I would suggest possibly bringing power swords with the void scarred instead of the shuriken rifles. And these guys are also a fairly cheap way to perform psychic action. So if you need something like Psychic Interrogation or Warp Ritual, this is a pretty expendable unit to use for that. And they're not bad at it, honestly. And they can also deny psychic powers as well. And lastly, for the Corsair Voids card, we have the Space Pirates Crew. So this is going to be a max unit of 10 with Power Swords and Shuriken Pistols. It's 120 points base. You don't need to go much above this to be effective. So you could add in the Shade Runner and the Wayseeker and the Soul Weaver for extra utility and damage, but it's not really needed. And the reason why this is is because this is a big damage dealing combat unit that auto wounds on six is the hit and doesn't need much support outside of just having other Eldar units in the area to back it up. It really doesn't need psychic powers. All of their attacks on six is the hit auto wound. They have three attacks apiece. You're getting an insane amount of value out of this unit. Of course, the only problem is, right, they're not actually craft world units, so they don't benefit from a lot of the things that craft world units do benefit from. However, they are still very cost effective. They're much cheaper than aspect warriors, and in big numbers, they can do comparable damage. So in conclusion, I think that even though Corsairs are often discounted at first glance, and you know, myself included, I didn't really think much of them either because they don't count as compulsory, they're not core, so they can't be buffed easily, and they're not craft world models, it made them really hard to buff and support, which is a key elder design. So initially, I didn't think that these guys were that great. However, I do think that their great innate abilities and weapon options make them a good utility unit. To fill in gaps where you need it for a reasonable price point and they're often much less expensive than aspect warriors so a unit of power swords of 10 that would basically be half the cost of a unit of howling banshees now howling banshees hit a lot harder but again there's less models in the unit and that makes them a little bit less versatile these guys can be taken in transport so you could put these guys in wave serpents or in reserve so they do have options as far as that goes, and they do have the ability to take Shuriken Rifles, which are essentially a better version of the Shuriken Catapult for sitting on objectives in the midfield and being able to support your combat units and other units in your army over the course of a long game. And also, just because they are not core or compulsory or craft rolled, that does not mean they can't benefit from some outside of the box thinking when it comes to buffs essentially a lot of the debuffs that the warlock runes of battle have can be used on these guys to quite a bit of an effect for example jinx negating one armor from an enemy unit is very effective with these guys also a well-placed reveal or restrain can really help these guys lock down targets to be able to slaughter and again hitting on sixes being auto wounds that also count as a six to wound makes their shuriken weapons extremely powerful much like hail of doom and it also works for their close combat weapons and basically all of their attacks in general so these guys are actually quite self-sufficient and don't really need a lot of outside help but things like prince riel or psychic debuffs from runes of battle can really push them into the realm of actually viable so Corsairs, not really that bad. They look really awesome. I do wish that they did have some ability to be directly buffed by Psychic Powers, and I think the fact that they don't keeps them from being a top-tier unit in general, but I do think they can be used relatively well and effectively in all but the most competitive tournament scenes. So again, I think these guys do have some viability in casual and competitive play maybe not at the top end tournament levels because they aren't craft world models so they don't benefit from those traits and they're a little bit hard to fit in detachments and things like that but i do think they can have a place if you're willing to think outside of the box and plan how you're going to include them in your list 
And just as another note, I am currently working on a Corsair-themed 2,000-point army, which doesn't have all Corsair units, but is heavily Corsair-influenced. And I'm going to be building this over the next couple of days and playtesting it over the next week. And I plan on putting out a video and telling you guys how it did, what were its strong points, what were its weak points, and stuff like that. So stay tuned for that. If you do like Corsairs, I think that video is going to be for you. All right, everybody. That's going to be it for today's video. Let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions or you have anything to add to this video or, you know, just thoughts in general about Corsairs. I'd love to hear it. I know they're not very popular, but I've had a few experiences with them in smaller games and stuff like that, and I do think they have potential. I just don't think anybody's tapped it yet because of the wide amount of disadvantages that Corsairs have with being not core or compulsory and stuff like that. All right, everybody, that's going to be it for today's video. I will see you guys next time. Have a good one, everybody. See you later. Peace out.